Reading Isaac Asimov's Foundation as a Woman has been hard. Hello guys and welcome to I Love Reading, a channel about interesting book-related subreddit topics. If you love our content, please press the like button, leave a comment and lastly, if you're new here, subscribe to our channel. Now let's get started. I know there are cultural considerations to the time this was written, but man, this has been a tough book to get through. It's annoying to think that in all the possible futures one could imagine for the human race, he couldn't fathom one where women are more than just baby machines. I thought it was bad not having a single female character, but when I got about three-quarter through to find that, in fact, the one and only woman mentioned is a nagging wife easily impressed by shiny jewelry, I gave up altogether. Maybe there is some redemption at the end, but I will never know I guess. Edit. This got a lot more traction than I was expecting. I don't have time this morning to respond to a lot of comments, but I am definitely taking notes of all the reading recommendations, and I'm thinking I might check out some of Asimov's later works. Great conversation everyone. He had limited experience with women at this stage, and if you read his early attempts to write female characters, the half-breed stories for instance, it is probably for the best he didn't damage the earliest foundation stories with something clumsy. After he got engaged, he found his feet in that regard, and in The Mule, second part of Foundation and Empire, the character of Beta is based on that fiancé. The second part of Second Foundation goes even further and has only one protagonist, and she is female. Asimov himself admitted to this. I believe in an early work collections, the early Asimov? He had an author's note commenting on how almost all characters in these stories were men, and it was mostly because of his inexperience with women. You might want to avoid Robert A. Heinlein then. Yup, I was going to say the same thing. Asimov is dismissive of women, but Heinlein is another level of misogyny. I recently read Stranger in a Strange Land, and its treatment of women as helpless, useless sex things is just nasty. I named my daughter Beta after a character from the Foundation. She single-handedly saves the universe by being kind to a misfit clown. As an aside, my screen name is often Beta Tester. I feel like the female characters got better after the first trilogy. I'd also say that the first trilogy didn't have great characterization in general. The second trilogy was much better. Also I always thought Dr. Susan Calvin was a badass. The original trilogy is a thought experiment and on purpose not driven by characters. Singular people can be flakes, psychohistory is dependable. Asimov wasn't so great at writing characters in general, and the 50s and 60s weren't particularly known for feminism, especially in science fiction. You really shouldn't let that deter you from reading these great books. Otherwise, you'll have to pass on many important authors of science fiction and basically all other genres. Asimov was never great at characterization, so I think your criticism would be pretty widely accepted. I agree, at least. As far as I've read of his works, he was an idea-focused writer rather than characterization. It's easy for me to look past the gender of the characters, but I could definitely see that becoming a problem if the default character for the writer is other than you as the reader. Agreed. I've only read a few of his books, but I'd say the iRobot stories are similar in that the gender of the characters takes a far back seat to their profession. He seems more focused on describing a future by what people do, not so much as who they are, which makes sense coming from such a technically minded person. But it seems by the time he wrote The End of Eternity, someone may have given him some notes on needing contributing female characters. I've mostly read a lot of Asimov's short stories, and while there aren't really any standout female characters, there really aren't any standout male characters, for most of them you could literally word swap all the pronouns around, and it wouldn't make the slightest difference. He was great at writing ideas and stories, but terrible at characters, male or female. I never even noticed the characters in Asimov. They're always forgettable, interchangeable caricatures who are all playing bits of Isaac himself. Read for the idea, premise, plot instead. That's where the quality is. Really? I thought Doors in Prelude to Foundation was one of the best written female characters I've read. She's smart, independent, saves Hari's ass on multiple occasions, and plays a key role in the development of the story. I'm surprised to see that the consensus is that Asimov was bad at characterization, his characters in Prelude were some of my favorite in all of the books I've read. So I'm a woman who read the Foundation books and like original poster, found the women are housewives only depressing in the early books. I didn't finish the original trilogy in part because of it. 
Then I read Prelude to Foundation and was like what the f doors is awesome, how did we go from Housewives to this? The original trilogy was published as short stories from 1942 to 1950. Prelude to Foundation was published in 1988, literally decades later. What I love about this is that it showed that Asimov grew and learned with the times. Yeah, he thought of women in an extremely limited way in the 1940s, but the degree to which he changed how he wrote women as the role of women in society around him changed shows, to me, that he had a truly open mind, as is fitting of a man of such creativity in the world of science fiction. Don't forget he was only 22 when Foundation was published. It was 1942. In Foundation he doesn't even anticipate computers, the whole novel is atomics this atomics that. The next few novels advance the universe to brain reading computers and people with holograms and flying cars, in the span of 500 years, what hadn't somehow been accomplished in the preceding 12,000. The second book features a pretty strong female character, Beta, although I'd have spelled it Beta from listening, and Foundation's Edge features too. It's safe to say that Asimov grew a lot between the first few books. Don't overthink the gender roles of a 70-year-old novel. I'm pretty particular to the characters of the Rendezvous with Rama series, which features a very strong Maori woman. Unfortunately, a lot of old sci-fi suffers from the same problems. Arthur C. Clarke predicted tablets for reading the news, but on the same effing page, couldn't imagine a woman being anything more than stewardesses on moon flights. It's frustrating for sure. I always found that series interesting because of the progression of the presence of women and their roles in it. It's been a while since I read it, but I think there are zero women in the first book. Then there's one like you said who is just kind of a ditz. Then there's the mayor who is sort of bad and also wrong. And eventually there's a super hot young one who is capable and on the good side. I always kind of felt like the Foundation series was a bit of a snapshot of the growing presence of women in science fiction, starting in the mid-20th century. The first one was published in 51 with the last one published while he was alive published in the 80s. The thing I'd like to know, but never will, is if Asimov intentionally excluded women from the first books, or if this was a symptom of the culture and the times. Was it a choice or was he just echoing the 50s? It's sad that Dune suffers from the same sort of stuff. Yeah, sure, there's the Bean Gesserit, but they're ultimately limited by their sex. It's fucked up. And don't even look into how X manages their production of people. Gross. You can probably guess from my name, I am a huge Asimov fan. I can understand your point of view if you have only read Foundation, however, if you persevere and read all the series you will find many competent, important female characters that have a huge impact on the series. I believe it's the third book where the main story follows an intelligent little girl who has a massive impact on the story as a whole. And was my favorite of the series. Yes, she has her father giving her instructions, but we get to see her start to think for herself, develop critical thinking and self-sufficiency, as well as being extremely likable. The second book has a female main character who is not only smart, but able to figure out important information, crucial world-saving information, by being a much more emotionally attuned person than her male peers, and while I'm aware that seems like a simplistic way to write women, all emotion, she is not written as a two-dimensional matronly figure. She is smart and cunning and brave. It has been a while since I read the whole six-book series so they have all blended together, but if you thought the story was gripping and interesting, don't let the first one put you off. I really hope you continue with it. A depressing but also liberating realization for me was even if I could read 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, I could never finish every important book ever written, and that's just in English. There's no time to waste reading books that are not enriching your life, regardless of whether they're classics or not, so it's okay to put them down. And enriching is not necessarily enjoying. I can read and finished books with themes and morals I've found objectionable, but there must be something in it that I find useful to experience. If Asimov isn't doing anything for you, that's okay, he didn't do anything for me either. There's a lot of literature out there. Wait, what are you talking about? I forget the name of the woman protagonist, but she literally is the one who thwarts the plan of the mule. Then later in the books, Akardi is the protagonist, and she basically goes on an adventure to find the second foundation. I think I had the series on my shelf for a decade before I read it. I would start but fall away. When I finally completed the first book, I moved through the second and third, then repeated the entire series immediately. 
It is difficult to place works of art or literature in context sometimes, but it is important to do so, just like traveling to foreign lands requires some tolerance. In the end, I really appreciated many of Asimov's fiction and non-fiction works. Foundation was truly monumental when you consider the times during which it was written, and that Asimov was basically a kid. The first story was published in 1942 when Asimov was barely 22 years old. The concepts in those first three books are groundbreaking psychohistory, the role of religion and civilization and progress. I couldn't develop that kind of universe at 20 to 21 or ever, really. World War II. Wow. I loved To Kill a Mockingbird when I was young, the last time I read it, the N-word grated like razor cuts, almost repelling me from the book. Make no mistake. I hated that word as a kid and have never used it. I hated it in the book, but To Kill a Mockingbird transcends that word and mints it, just as Foundation rises about the times in which it was written. I suspect if I read the first three Foundation books today, I might trip a little, but still appreciate the art. I wonder how kindly future generations would remember anything we write today, regardless of how tolerant or enlightened we might think we are. One does not need to look far to find sexist, racist, oppressive material beliefs today. Good luck with your reading, original poster. The product of the time for sure, but a masterpiece nonetheless, and a work of fiction. If it's not your cup of tea it's okay, but you have to go beyond what might bother you. I'm Latin American and I have read so many books that practically treat us like fourth-class Spanish citizens with no identity and with generic as hell names. While not a woman, I ran into a similar feeling when I decided to try and reread a series of books from my childhood, Piers Anthony's Incarnations of Immortality. I loved them as a kid. Couldn't get through the first one, on a pale horse, as an adult. The sexism is just so thick. I now remember at times even as a kid thinking something was off, but now, I just find a strong enough set of rose-tinted glasses to make this readable to me anymore. For female-friendly sci-fi, I'd suggest the Vorkosigan series by Lois McMaster Bujold. She really explores how technological advances impact society, with a special emphasis on women. I've found rereading many of my favorite sci-fi books from my teen years now cringeworthy in my 50s, not just for portrayals of women, but also people of other colors. LGBTQ aren't even represented. I wonder what people will make of science fiction written now in 60 to 70 years? There you have it, interesting comments by Reddit users on reading Isaac Asimov's Foundation. Note. Books talked about in the video can be accessed through the link on the description below. Thank you for watching till the end. If you loved the video, don't forget to press the like button and also subscribe to I Love Reading. See you on the next video.